Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to class. Today we are going to talk about some key concepts in language acquisition. Uh, and I primarily draw it from the generative paradigm, a Chomsky enterprise, a theory. Uh, why it's important to understand key concepts? It's important because the whole theory is situated in the in these frameworks and these three concepts that we are going to talk about today led language acquisition device ug universal grammar and poverty of a stimulus a very significant argument uh, you know put forward by chomsky to support his generative framework so we are going to talk about these three key concepts today LED, UG, and poverty of stimulus. If you recall, in our other uh, classes and videos, we talked about behaviorist paradigm and behaviorist theory of language acquisition. This whole idea of stimulus, response, operant conditioning, habit formation, tabula rasa. So these concepts were discussed and the entire understanding of behaviorist theory was discussed. And uh, the monumental work called Verbal Behavior was produced by B.F. Skinner in 1957. And we also saw how Chomsky criticized that approach severely. And in 1965, aspects of theory of syntax came that changed the entire understanding. And it has a very deeper impact on understanding language acquisition process. Uh, so, if you look at the if you look at the broad framework of generative paradigm and language acquisition in generative paradigm, uh, it says you know human language is complicated and forms one of the most complex areas of human cognition, and it is beyond doubt we all believe in that. Despite the complexity of language, children are able to accurately acquire a language within a short period of time. And when we say accurately acquire a language, we have to refer to the Chomsky idea of linguistic competence. That will give you the idea. What do you mean by accurately acquire the language? Because Chomsky imagines, uh, you know, uh, Chomsky argues for uh, under, you know, you know uh, computational properties of language and he says that, you know, grammatical structures are underlying structures available to all speakers without variation. They, they acquire it in a, in a ideal speech, speaker, listener, speaker, hearer context with homogeneous speech community. So that's what he talks about in, ling in linguistic competence. So he says, uh, children acquire accurately fine the language or their first language is the native language and this highlights the possibility of humans having an innate language acquisition ability and why is so, so why he said so we have to draw from the understanding of poverty of stimulus that uh, you know be, despite a fuzzy and degenerate data available to a child a child acquires language perfectly fine and that means there must be some inbuilt mechanism, some innate apparatus available to the child to learn a language perfectly fine. So the innate hypothesis supports language nativism and several reasons and concepts have been proposed to support and explain this hypothesis. And in that, these three key concepts are very crucial. Language acquisition device, LED, uh, universal grammar, and poverty of stimulus. We have to understand these three concepts in a continuum and it will give us total idea of generative paradigm 
and language acquisition. Linguistic nativism believes language is native to human and they are born with some knowledge of language. They acquire a language not entirely through learning, but it is an autonomous, effortless process. So learning lang language is a child's play for a child. And in his work, Chomsky introduced the idea of language acquisition device about which we are going to talk shortly. If you look at the Chomsky uh, take on this, uh, I refer to Chomsky 1988, Language and Process of Knowledge, MIT Press, page number 24. I quote from there. The speed and precision of vocabulary acquisition leaves no real alternative to the conclusion that child somehow has a concept available right, uh, before experience with language and is basically learning labels for the concepts that are already part of his conceptual apparatus. So he imagines, I unquote, so he imagines and argues for an innate conceptual apparatus and the underlined set of rules available to the child. So child simply does not learn from input, but child actually confirms the labels. So for, for example, if the child has Hindi input, the labels will be confirmed with Hindi terms. If the child is, you know, let's say French speaking environment, child will confirm these labels with French as a language. If the child is in, uh, let's say, uh, Tamil speaking environment, the child will confirm the label with Tamil language. So this is what he means by the child confirms to the labels because the speed of learning of vocabulary is amazing by a child. And you know, you might have seen at times parents are amused to see how a child brings up new expressions, new utterances, new sentences that we cannot guess from where the child has learned it, but the child articulates and we are amused, right? We are surprised. The speed at which child learns, there must be some innate capability that endows the child to learn at such a high speed. It doesn't happen with adult learning. So this is what the Chomsky can take and he proposes, so he brings in two ideas to support this innate conceptual apparatus and he talks about language acquisition device. Now device is a misnomer term so we should not be confused with some you know physical organ on some physical thing. Device refers to so acquisition device, language acquisition device refers to innate capability and this conceptual apparatus or mechanism available to the human child. So it's not physiologically located in our brain somewhere, but it is a conceptual, a hypothetical mechanism that he is referring to. So according to Chomsky, human child children are born with a set of language learning tools referred to as LED language acquisition device. He is talking about the innate capability at the time of birth available to a child to learn a language. That's what he refers to as LED. And LED is an abstract part of human mind which houses the ability for humans to acquire and produce languages. Right? So he refers to that conceptual mechanism. He proposed that children are able to derive rules of a language through hypothesis testing because they are equipped with LED, right? And the lad then transform rules into basic grammar and this is how child develops grammar. Hence, according to Chomsky, the lad explains why children seem to have the innate ability to acquire a language and account for why no explicit teaching is required for a child to acquire a language. So the basic idea what is, uh, you know, arguing here is the native or innate capacity of a human child to acquire a language. And unlike behaviorist paradigm in which all responses had corresponding stimuli, he says that, you know, 
this apparatus, this mechanism is already there at the time of birth. So there is a departure from the idea of tabula rasa, if you recall. Tabula rasa, a blank slate, right, where the child doesn't have anything, no predisposition, right. So the child doesn't have any knowledge of language. But Chomsky talks about knowledge of language and underlying principles a child is born with. So he situates this, this tabula rasa thing out of the ambit of the discussion. And he says that, you know, language acquisition device. That's, that's, a, that's a counter argument he gives about this conceptual apparatus and available innate capability to a human child. So child is not at the mercy of the environment, but the child is innately equipped and endowed with this mechanism to learn. And environment does play a role, but it environment does not control the entire process of learning. That's the beauty of you know, positing LED or language acquisition device in this entire generative enterprise. So it argues to contain all and only principles which are universal to all human language. And this LED needs, needs to be triggered. So the role of a stimulus is important to an extent where it triggers the learning process. So the primary linguistic data available in the environment triggers or activates this LED, activates this device, a conceptual apparatus. And once it is activated, the child is able to discover the structure of language to be learned by matching the innate knowledge of the basic grammatical relationship to the structure of particular language in the environment. And when we say uh, the basic grammatical relationship to the structure of the particular language, that means there is some innate universal you know, uh, structure or set of principles available to the child. And the child sets the parameter according to the input available in the environment. And that leads to another important concept called the universal grammar. So what is that set of principles? That universal grammar. So once this LED is uh, you know, activated, universal grammar starts working. A child has universal grammar set of principles at the time of birth contained in that LED. Later on, Chomsky done away, uh, has done away with LED. He talks about universal grammar, set of universal principles. So, what is universal grammar? Another important concept in genetic paradigm. The universal grammar suggests that all human languages right, operate on certain basic principles. And all human beings have a set of limited rules for grammar that are universal in all human languages, universal in nature and available in all human languages. So this whole idea that all human languages operate on certain set of fundamental principles and these fundamental principles or set of principles are available to the human child. These rules are genetically wired, and this is exaggerated expression used by Steven Pinker. Uh, so, do not perceive or conceive or Im imagine a wiring system that carries the linguistic structures. The gen genetically wired, that means it is endowed. So, the human child is endowed with this capability, uh, you know, innate uh, conceptual apparatus and capability to learn. So it's not actually physical wiring that he is referring to. Or, so these rules are, on which rules? The universal set of principles. For example, let's say subject, verb and object. So all languages will have subject, verb, verb and object arranged in a particular sequence. Right? Verb must agree with the subject. So this is universal principle. But where, where is that variation? Why English is different from Hindi for that matter? Or you know, Tamil is different from Hindi for that matter? Or Telugu is different from Chinese for that matter? 
subject subject as a category is available to all human languages object as a category available to all human languages verb as a category available to all human languages and there is a relationship so subject must agree with the verb verb must agree with the subject there is a subject verb agreement that is universal principle but how it happens is language specific the the arrangement of the components in a sentence for example english has s v o word order where you have subject verb and object so object is part of uh, the predicate subject agrees with the verb as opposed to english hindi has a sequence of arrangement called word order such as you know subject object and verb so in english you say john eats an apple right so john is a subject eats a verb an apple an object so look at the word order john eats an apple but in hindi we say ram aam khata hai ram is subject aam is mango ram is name aam is mango khata hai eats the verb so look at the look at the order subject object and verb so in english you have svo word order but in hindi you have sov order verb comes at the end of the sentence this difference is parametric in nature this difference is language specific but when we come to the categories and for, and, and their forms we have subject in both the sentences we have verb in both the sentences we have object in both the sentences and why do we have object we have object because both the verbs khata hai or eat in both the languages is transitive in nature so it will essentially uh, you know take one noun as an object or we call direct object as a category so variations are there differences are there but for a child this universal principle of subject verb agreement for that matter is available the child learns how to achieve this agreement in a language specific parametric environment this is what uh, he is referring to so in other words this theory sees language acquisition as a process of filtering through the set of possible grammatical structures in natural languages pre programmed in one's mind and that is guided by the language input in one's environment so universal grammar is set of universal principles available to all languages and the differences are parametric in nature so <clears throat> the grammar operates on these universal principles but the child develops a language centric grammar depending on the environment and exposure in that particular linguistic environment so if the child is in hindi speaking environment hindi rules will be set as parameters so hindi's rules become parameters and they will be set by the child and it also gives us this understanding that why a child is able to develop native like competence in multiple languages so if the child is exposed to let's say two languages or three languages at the same time right we had talked about it in early bilingualism uh you know if the three languages are available the child will set parameters for three languages because the universal principles of language is available to the child so child sets parameter for three languages and child develops three parallel grammars with one semantic system that's the beauty of universal grammar chomsky later introduced generative grammar arguing that properties of a generative grammar arise from innate universal grammar right and this theory of generative grammar describes a set of rules that are used to order words correctly in order to form grammatically sound sentences so word order is just one of the parameters and it also attempts to describe a speaker's innate grammatical knowledge so you know if you combine these two concepts ld and universal grammar they become the pillars of the framework of generative grammar where 
a child is you know argued to have this innate conceptual apparatus contained within the universal set of rules of grammar and the primary linguistic data available to the child triggers this LED to function, triggers this UG to function, universal grammar to function, and child learns labels, not the rules, because the rules and in terms of set of universal rules available to the child already. So what child is doing? Chomsky says hypothesis testing and learning. So the underlying rules, abstract rules are already there with the child in that conceptual innate apparatus and child is exposed to a particular language environment and the PLD, primary linguistic data available to the child activates this, this mechanism to work and the child confirms the levels and learns and develops a grammar in that particular language. So he is referring to understanding of principles and parameters. So all human languages operate on universal principles that he refers to as a set of principles, universal grammar. But the parameters are language specific and the child is able to set parameters because principles are available to child. Right? So these are two important concepts. Another important contribution Chomsky makes in his arguments in generative grammar is that the environment for a child for learning language is not ideal and child does not receive, a human child does not receive structured instructions and uh, both kinds of data, positive and negative data. So you do not have, a child does not have opportunity to have a clear uh, generative data. Data is degenerate, fuzzy, right, incomplete full of idiosyncrasies. So look at the poor data available to the child. Right? Uh, if we relate it to stimulus and response, input and output, then look at the poor input a child has in the environment. The adult speech is full of idiosyncrasies and degenerate elements. It's never complete. Right? Nobody or no child has uh, an ideal input for activating these universal principles and innate conceptual apparatus. Chomsky refers to this data as, or this stimulus available to the child as poor. And why poor? Because this is not rich, this is not clear, right? It is fuzzy, it is degenerate. And he calls it the situation poverty of stimulus, right? It's one of the most significant arguments that he makes to ascertain the two principles, LED and UG. And, uh, you know, post-80s, poverty of stimulus became increasingly integrated into the theory of genitive grammar. And in, in his argument, Chomsky says, that the amount of input a child receives during language acquisition is insufficient to account for linguistic output. Because we do not have a systematic, organized and you know, structured input for a child. So a child re you know, receives unorganized, unstructured, incomplete, degenerate input. But look at the output. The output is perfectly fine, grammatical, how it happens. And he refers to the same mechanism, right, innate conceptual apparatus that allows the child to filter through these, this, this data available to the child. And to be exact, he said that innate speaker has acquired a grammar on the basis of a very restricted and degenerate evidence. Right? Pinker concludes, Steven Pinker, a very renowned psychologist and also expert on cognitive sciences, 
that humans have a system that is more sophisticated than what they are being exposed to. So he is again referring to the same innate capability that human beings are endowed with. Right? And this idea that insufficient data, degenerate data, unstructured data, incomplete data, they do not restrict the child to learn the grammar of a particular language, you know, uh, right, perfectly fine. A child, learning of a child is fine, despite the fact that the input is problematic, input is insufficient. And if you equate, amount of output goes far beyond the amount of input a child gets. Right? So, that's important point to make and notice. Pullam and Scholes try to define the characteristics of the environment and the properties of data available to a child. So, reinforcing this poverty of stimulus idea of Chomsky, Pullam and Scholes comes up with four important characteristics of such data available for a child in the environment. And they say four important characteristics they mention. Number one, positivity. Number two, degeneracy. Number three, incompleteness. And number four, idiosyncrasy. So the input for a child or the primary linguistic data for a child or the environment the child is brought up in and the child acquires a language is marked by these four characteristics. Positivity, what does it mean? Our children are only exposed to positive linguistic data. So we don't teach or we don't speak because you know, you have to understand that we do not speak differently in front of a child. We have a normal speech around the child. Adults speak uh, with normal, uh, you know, pace, with normal uh, expressions. It's not specific to child. So the input the child gets is a normal, authentic, regular input available in the speech acts of the adults around. And what is that? It is systematic and positive. Because you don't use negative data or un deliberate ungrammatical data. So child is not exposed to what is ungrammatical. Child is not exposed to negative data. But how come a child is able to filter out and point out and notice ungrammaticality? I mean, take an example. If you go and you know tell a three and a half year old child or four years old child, Papa office jati hai, Papa goes to office. Hindi has grammatical gender. So office jati hai, if you use feminine agreement marker with the verb in this sentence in front of a four year old child, the child is able to tell you, no, no, Papa office jate hai. The Masculine marker, suffix, right? Jata and jati, feminine marker. How it happens? Child has not been exposed to the formal rules of grammar. But child is able to understand with native speaker intuition. This intuition is developed, right? And this intuition is tacit. The knowledge of this grammar is tacit, right? implicitly there, underlyingly available. So child is exposed to positive data only, but still there is lack of negative data that aids a child in identifying ungrammatical sentences that are unacceptable to language. So we don't speak that, but where does the child learn it from? And what makes a child to distinguish between grammatical and ungrammatical make judgments about the grammaticality of a sentence or acceptability of a sentence. 
So this is important point to notice. Then number two, degeneracy. What does it mean? Children are, as I told you, children are not exposed to structured instructions about learning a language, right? They have mixed data where you might have degeneracy and uh, things like, you know, slip of tongue for that matter. Erroneous, full of errors, slip of tongue, right? Uh, ungrammatical sentences, incomplete sentences. I mean, look at your casual speech. Look at how we talk to each other in the speech event around a child. We don't make full sentences. We talk normally. And in normal talk, we have such degenerate data like errors, like slip of tongues, right? Like incomplete sentences, like referential informations. But the child's learning is perfectly fine despite this degenerate data. And that also supports Chomsky's argument. Another characteristic is incompleteness. So data is incomplete because we don't have full range of data around the child. Child is exposed to normal adult conversation as an input available to him or her, and which is fuzzy and incomplete. The fourth most important point and the characteristics of the environment and the data is idiosyncrasy, right? So there are many utterances the child might not have heard ever, right? The linguistic data each child is exposed to is different, right? Idiosyncratic in nature, but the learning of the child is not affected by it. If you go by these properties, these properties together support the claim of Chomsky about poverty of stimulus. So the data which is available to the child for language learning is poor, degenerate and incomplete. But the learning of a child is perfectly fine and complete. And this outcome also underlines, right, the Chomsky position that every human child is born with, with an innate apparatus or mechanism to acquire a language, what Steven Pinker calls, uh, you know, genetic wiring, right? And uh, if we look at the you know, language acquisition, first language acquisition by the human child closely, uh, we find a lot of support for Chomsky claims and Chomsky framework in this generative thing. So we have to keep in mind these three most important points and key concepts like LAD, language acquisition device, UG, universal grammar, and this idea of input that is poor and he calls it poverty of stimulus. So these three verticals together, right, create an overall understanding and framework of understanding language acquisition in generative paradigm. Uh, I hope these three concepts are clear to you and uh, we expect questions, right? You post it in the forum and we'll try to Together, we'll try to explain it and understand it further, right? These three concepts have a very far-fetching consequences. And uh, perhaps in next video, when we talk about critical period hypothesis, what is the period? When we say early childhood is the best time, formative years for learning a language, uh, then where does this age end and the new phase begins? What is that window period? Right? So that is called critical period of learning, critical period hypothesis in language. We'll talk about it. And when we talk about critical period of uh, critical period hypothesis, we will build upon 
these three major key points, LED, UG, and poverty stimulus to understand that concept. So this is it for now, and uh, we will answer your uh, questions in the forum. So do put your questions in the forum, and uh, you know, I hope this is clear to you. So thank you very much. Thank you.